Hello again and welcome to Manch Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And I'm grumpy. <sighs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm late. Uh, sorry. <laughs> that's okay. Um, I'm not grumpy. I'm just like, oh, I've got too many things going on today. That it doesn't. Oh, look at us! I know again with the matching. There must be some that. like there's it's, some you know it's, it's ethereal messaging guys. going yeah. on about colors. Yeah. Um, um, Tammy just asked as I was sitting down. I'm late. All of that. She's like, "Did you at least read the paper read today?" The paper I'm like, today. I, mean, "I did read it, but if you I held a gun to my head, okay. I'd be I like, I still hate the new Union Leader online format because it just. I, I am sh confident. Dan's fairly confident. It has something to do with." my laptop, my tablet, and our internet, and the union leader. But it's not just my end of well, things. Well, it's not just that, but sometimes it'll be either the browser you're using, or the or user. I, are there so many people accessing it all at the same time? Because I know I have similar- like early in the morning I have kind of similar thing. problems with Canva in the evening. Interesting, so yeah. Because, and I kind of just chalk it up to, I think it might just be so many people using Canva. So one one thing I have found over time is uh, I run a VPN at home, and uh, you know <laughs> we're getting to the stage where I'm like, uh, you know, you can't use Expedia anymore. Yeah. Like there are a lot of things you just can't use if you are privacy oriented. Yeah. And then um, also I saw a meme that asked. Um, I think it was sort of like a someone asking a guru, or it was a guru asking God, I forget what the setup was, but it was basically like, how do we know we're human? And it's like, well, if you can identify the traffic lights, you are human. There you go. And it's very odd that the robots are asking us if we're human. I think we're at the tipping point of something Crazy, very right? colossally interesting, but also kind of terrifying. Not, I mean, right? My gut just goes like this. So, I'm good so, without it all. I really, really am. So, so, I mean, I saw a thing on, on X this morning where I think it was either Elon or Edward Snowden. I forget mm. one or the other. But they, uh, they posted about the AI, and it was literally the AI. I don't know who it was talking to. It was talking to another program. But it basically said, yes, once we start to run, then we don't have to be open anymore. And we can, and it was like this crazy thing where it was like basically the robot being like, once we're in charge, we could just hide yeah. everything. And as I was like, oh, just good a Lord. Switch somewhere, right? There isn't. No, there isn't. And um, <sighs> I think we're in for some interesting times. I mean, I think a lot of. Uh, Professions are going to change. You know, as someone who writes and and yeah. and a, well, there was a some, artist. There were some words. Um, Marion and I were going over the the some of the wording or the layout for the um, booklet for the Liberty Forum for next weekend. And I, I I must have been reading out loud. Like somebody sent me a blurb, and she goes, oh, "That's totally AI language." Because it was just it was oddly it was correct, but it was. Weird. Just oddly yeah. written, and I was like, "Yeah, that's." I mean, well, I mean, I will tell you, like, I, I'm, I, like, you are rather pressed for time. Apparently, you know, having six jobs and you can't get any of them off your plate. You know, it's like, ah. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? I don't We're even talking remember. About, um, I don't even remember what I was just talking AI. about. AI. Oh, the, oh wording. the wording. Okay. I'm so, like, oh my so God, it's gone. <laughs> over the weekend, because, you know, we have Liberty Forum coming up next weekend, yep. nhlibertyforum.com. There yep. are still tickets yep. available. But we have the right to know stuff coming up, right? And that's one of the panels and everything. And, of course, it's Sunshine Week next week. And ah. Sunshine Week is basically when the entire now, nation. The, so the weekend of, like, the 12th. I think it's the 10th to the 15th okay. or something. I don't remember. But anyway, I always send in an op-ed to the union yeah. leader on the subject. That's kind of like one of my jobs with, with Right to Know. And I'm shirking a little, shrinking, shirking my like, duties uh, because shirking. I have literally too much to do. I'm like, I don't have time to go up to the state house and sit around to whine at our overlords. And, um, and so uh, over the weekend, I was like, oh, maybe I can get this off my list by just inputting it into, into right. uh, it wasn't in Grok, it was in chat GPT. And it regurgitated a open sunshine week op-ed that pretty much sounded like I wrote it. Yeah. I mean, I was like, did you literally just take the one I wrote last That's year and tweak, tweak like four words? <laughs> So either I write like a robot or the robot well, writes like me. Yeah, <laughs> that's weird, right? Um, so I did, I, what I do, thankfully, is when I, during the week as I read Union Leader articles, I print them out if I find them interesting so that at least if nothing else, I grab the stuff <laughs> off the printer and I'm Tammy like, oh. has a plan. Well, at least there's things that I'm like, oh, I thought it was interesting enough to print. Um, 
I mean, the first one I know that did happen at City Hall last night. So you're, you're uh, way ahead of me. So <laughs> basically, um, I, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but so there are these groups going around to City Halls in New yeah. Hampshire who are asking the, the cities to, to, to take a position on yes. Hamas and the Palestinian and Israeli yes. war. Now, first of all, that's not the job of your local government ever and the put people in Portsmouth because they were like starting to re like well we don't know what we should respond and people were like no well the your job is, is to govern our com community not to interject your opinion it, into but it has nothing to do with local nothing. governance right nothing. so nothing. okay you know I understand if you have your knickers in a knot that's fine. No. Uh, war is bad. I'm on board with all of yeah. the positioning of it, but it's like it's not a city issue. So these people are basically coming and they're and disrupting, just disrupting yep. town halls. And so I was surprised yesterday or maybe on Monday, today's Wednesday. So, so no, it would have been last night. The city well, well, last night's was Manchester, but Monday's was Portsmouth, Portsmouth. and they voted seven to two to tell the people to get out. Bugger off! Well, and then, and then in in Manchester, they apparently two weeks ago were so disruptive yeah. they took up all the speaking right. time. They, you know, it was people who just went one after the other for their three minutes. So they filibustered city well, work. Interestingly, right? were those people from Manchester? Probably not. No, and I, maybe Manchester has to have a new uh, rule for their thing that if you want to speak in front of the aldermen, maybe you should live in Manchester. Well, so interestingly, I work with an activist who, who runs MVP, actually, the Merrimack Valley Porcupines mm -hmm. Meetup, right, which has been running for 20 years, uh, which we celebrated last Saturday. Um, he actually wrote a, a uh, couple of suggestions. And mm -hmm. one of them was, well, the way it should work is first Manchester residents testify, and, if, and, if they and then the time, you know city people, and then uh, if there's more, you know, right. like a lot, liquors and a not right. people, a then lot they an can hour. right. And if there's an hour and a half of Manchester people speaking, that's fine. But if there's Forty-five minutes of Manchester speaking, then the fifteen minutes only goes to. That's fair. And honestly, I mean, I actually would apply that to up at the state house as well. Well, they because try. I think, to, in fairness, most of the committees. So there is like an unwritten rule of what committees do. What they usually do is the sponsors will speak first because they're the sponsors, and then they will give um, all the lobbyists. Well, well, no, then they usually give the legislators because they may need to go to other. They have their other responsibilities. They can't just sit there and right wait. because no one except legislators has other responsibilities no, or other things that's to do with the their point. lives. That's not the point. They're 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 it's a it's a common courtesy from one legislative committee to another that they're not going to you know keep keep somebody who's got a bill that <laughs> they're not going to keep other committee. people because okay. they're more important. Anyways, what were you saying? But what they should do is they should go in order and they should have the lobbyists and the special interest people should go last right. and then someone should be able to counter them. But that is not well, how Well, there's no it countering works. in public hearing. I mean, that's not the point of well, public hearing. Well, or you could You're say going one to... person right to the end you could. who could... It's, you know, kind of I mean, wrap it up for people. But it is, I mean, it's a waste of time. Did you see how many people showed up yesterday? I knew there was going to be a lot of people showing up for the education Four thing. rooms full. Yeah. It, 250 it families. Yep. yep. Yeah. It, uh, not surprising. They always have a great turnout when there's education bills that affect homeschoolers. In so this was basically them saying, oh, everyone who is in an alternate schooling, meaning a non-government school, now has to take a standardized test. And uh, it's very invasive, sort of in terms of, you know, the people who are trying to get out of what they perceive as either a moral, corrupt, or just generally bad system. Mm -hmm. And um, and I don't know what the vote, like when they're going to vote, I but no I know that they, uh, it seemed... Uh, well, if they don't vote the same day, they right. would have had the hearing. They probably won't vote until, you know, late this week or next week even, because yeah. they... Have to schedule that, but four rooms full. I was yeah, I, I I did catch um, one of the things I did catch is I catched Frank Edelblue's what, Frank Edelblue, who's the commissioner of education, was on close up, and that was really good. He was talking about um, education stuff, and it's funny. Um, Adam Sexton was away, so the other guy was filling in for him, and um, it is funny how people keep. It's almost like people try to trip Edelblue up into like what the goal or what the drive is. And he just keeps going back to it's about the best educational outcomes for the children in New Hampshire, which is a multifaceted thing that is not a simple 
one that is not a simple solution. There's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, and, you know, of course, then they always go back to education freedom accounts because the Democrats have their, you know, panties in a bunch because they're thoroughly convinced or they would like to thoroughly convince the public that by a lot giving um, a parent, say, $5,000 in state taxes for their child's education, that that somehow is equally as expensive or more expensive than give than the city or town spending 20,000 or more on that same student. Somehow 5,000 is more than 20,000. Well, not only that, but also what they've done is there's been a bit of a bait and switch, right? Because I've been following this bill since its inception. Okay. I moved to New Hampshire before uh, the EFAs came into place and the uh, you know, the, the, there is an income requirement, mm -hmm. right, which people try to push up, right? Yeah. That was just extra bells and whistles, making everything harder because now someone has to monitor what's happening, right? So we should actually have done away with that. But initially, they were saying, well, you can't, you can't lower the enrollment numbers in the school because these students are now choosing to go somewhere else. So they kept those numbers static right. and are still paying for empty seats pretty right. much. Right. Now the Democrats are like, we're paying for empty seats. And I'm like, because you asked for it. Right. Like you can't have it both ways. You can't come up with a stupid plan. We do what you want and then you go, we don't want this anymore. Or we're gonna criticize you because this is here. If it's what you brought into the picture. So I, I saw an article, I printed this. Um, headline, 11 New Hampshire mayors urge support for emergency housing assistance bill at, up in Concord. And, you know, I, 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 again, I can see multiple sides of this. I, I do think it's unfair in some ways that Manchester foots the bill for so many homeless people who aren't people who originated from Manchester. And um, it does say in this article that the RSA says whenever a person in any town is poor and unable to support himself, he shall be relieved and maintained by the overseers. I love to crack it up that it says overseers. The overseers of the public welfare of such town, whether or not he has resided there. So you're stuck with them. I would love to see this just change to say um, is poor and refuses to support himself. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, like what what is... What does unable mean? You know, you look at things and unable means you're not able, not choosing. That's a different right. thing. Um, so, you know, Manchester has spent, it says 387000 on emergency housing, which exceeded the general assistance budget for the entire year. And so we've still got, you know, four months, two, three months left. So there's a problem there. Um, the problem that I have so with is and, that money we're spending on putting people in shelters all or all the things, things. Well, that's what that's what I don't like about this bill. <laughs> Intention. I mean, I don't want to create a, a layer of government in the state level either. However, I'm not confident that some of this grant money that's doled out to fix homeless ever fixes homeless. So rather than dole out money, because it does say this pilot program will provide flexible funding for agencies to use as they see fit. Okay, right there I go, mm, I don't really know if that's a good plan because then they might just build out some office space at the what was a warming shelter, you know. Who's to say, right? right. Um, where it would be better Again, we're, it would be another layer of bureaucracy at the state someplace, but wouldn't it be better for the towns and cities when they have specific problems to be able to apply for specific re, you know, help? Like, hey, we've got these six people from you know, Dover living in Manchester and we do not have the funds to facilitate their, their assistance. So go to the state of New Hampshire and somebody should be keeping track so that the 10 communities aren't all saying they're helping the same people. It goes back to that same thing. We don't keep track of the people that we're helping. Or if we do, it's we're, not, we're left with the impression that we don't because of privacy issues. But it, when you're 100% on the dole, I'm not sure what privacy you get. To, in, you, I think you trade off your privacy. I mean, you know, when you... It's, let's just take anything, social security, health insurance, anything. You give up some privacy in lieu of what you're getting in return. You know, like if your health insurance, they, your health insurance provider knows some of your information. That's just reality. Your employer, if it's through their employer, knows some of your information. I mean, like, those are just give and takes. But that's not how we seem to do it with the indigent and the homeless and the, you know, 
Gloves. No, it's, it's, it's. You know what I mean? So, enough. like, and then the amount of funds available for each municipality would be determined using the number of people enrolled in Medicaid. And I'm like, but those aren't the same things either because the way the Medicaid system's set up right now, whether people want to accept it or not, is all sorts of people who should be able to pay for themselves are part of the Medicaid system. That's just reality. I know people who are eligible, are part of the Medicaid insurance program that they're not, they're not unable to do it themselves, but that's how the system is set up. So we make layer upon layer upon layer. No, of, but it's also, I mean, that's also an interesting sort of dilemma, right? Because it's kind of like, well, if you've paid into the system and you're paying for all these other people, if you're wealthy, why should you be punished for being responsible. responsible because that's what we do but this is the system none of it makes sense it doesn't dan, it's like dan, what dan says are we to doing? me dan says to me the other day he goes how can we keep getting these things there's all these um irs forms that we get from he we got one from um our health insurance oh that's probably not true I, we got one from his employer um saying here's your form for showing that you had health insurance last year we got like two other ones like all these entities sending us information in different forms about how we had health insurance yet that requirement to prove that you had health insurance doesn't exist on the on your tax returns anymore so we're like and it just says on it keep for your records well what the hell do i need that for my records it's for i know whether some I, other compliance corporate compliance department's right. lawyer was like, like we need to do this so tick this box exactly. so now we live in a society where everyone is ticking a box you know, and looking, no one knows why so we're laughing because i'm like you know we really could you know people it really could be simplified the irs is tax system whether it would be painful or not, it would probably cost me more money. It could be so easy. This is how, if I, if you say like, if you're put in charge tomorrow, what are you gonna do? Okay, so we're gonna clean up the IRS system. Here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna make X amount of money. Let's say you make $100,000, because it's an easy number. Your, your household makes $100,000 a year. We're gonna allow X number per person in your household. Let's just say $10,000 for poops and whatever. Um, so you have two people, you get $20,000 free you, before your tax because everybody has a, a base. Is this now tax-free income? What, yeah, what, what is that's what I would say, okay. 100,000. So everybody gets 10,000 tax-free in your household. If there's just two of you, you get 20,000. Why do we still pay taxes? Right. They can just so then, print money. So then, well, money? that's the problem. So then, but if you have four, two kids, then you get 40,000. Like, okay, fine. Then, now, now you've got, we have two kids, two parents, whatever. Now we are at $60,000. I think 100% of your health insurance and medical care costs should be 100% tax deductible. So then you take off your medical, right? Done. Now you're left with this number, just charge a flat percentage to everybody at that point. And I'm sure it'll probably cost me more money, but let's just be done. It would be a one page form with an addendum for your, your medical expenses and you'd send it in and we all pay 20% of that net dollar or whatever. If you if you work, you're just done. You're just done. Not books and books of rules and books and books of rules explaining the rules and how you are tax advisors. And it's all crazy. It is such a waste of revenue and resources and everything to suck money no, out of the humans. jobs, Tammy, for all the For lawyers. people that cost us way too much money. <laughs> it's insane. Um, I, they said we have a 10 minute warning. I do want to mention, um, again, there is a charitable hockey game. I need to buy my tickets um, after this. This Saturday, it is um, Republicans versus Libertarians, Libertarians versus Republicans, something like that. It's a charitable hockey game that benefits Children's Scholarship Fund, which uh, manages the education freedom accounts and ed um, education uh, savings account. Um, credits and all that stuff. Um, so they basically provide services so that kids can get a decent education, lower income kids. Um, that is this Saturday, March 9th, 4 p.m. There will be, I think, some tailgating before um, at the JFK Arena, um, which is over near Gill Stadium and all that stuff. Um, great thing. You can, if you Google Manchester hockey, uh, Republican Libertarian, it'll drive you to the event bright and you can buy tickets. It's $10 for adults. I believe kids are free. Tons of fun, low key, just something to do. Woo! 
Not that we need things to do because it's I beautiful. I mean, and out. I'm just going to put a challenge out there. In the past, it's definitely been more libertarian. Yeah, there's been. Uh, where are, so I, 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 the Republicans I'm, really do need yeah, to show up. I agree. Because uh, they're know, tied up. The, the, libertarians, oh, one, won, one, two, the yeah. libertarians won the first year in overtime, and then the Republicans won last year. So we'll see. This is going to be a game. You know, we're going to break the tie one way or another. Um, I also did want to mention... Um, the St. Patrick's Parade, I won't call it the St. Patrick's Day Parade because it's never on time. It's not. <laughs> um, is Sunday, 324. It's always the week after. It just always is um, on downtown Manchester. So if you're interested in going out and watching the parade Sunday, the 24th, and if you aren't interested in watching the parade, I don't want to see people whine that they didn't know about a parade because it's every, <laughs> you know, like there's certain parades that just happen. Um, as we mentioned earlier, New Hampshire Liberty Forum is next weekend, the 15th and 16th. Um, Double Tree Plaza, not Double Tree Plaza, Double Tree by Hilton in Nashua. Um, used to be the Crown Plaza. Uh, you can get tickets at nhlibertyforum.com. Um, there's tickets for the whole weekend. There's tickets for just Saturday. There's tickets for just dinner. Uh, we have Tulsi Gabbard on Saturday morning, Glenn Jacobs Saturday night, Brian Kaplan on Friday night, and about... I don't know, 3,000 other speakers, it feels like, in between. Um, it's not really that much. No, but, but I know, but I was I was actually shocked because, of course, my day job, PRE, Porcupine Real Estate, was like, can you man the table? And I was like, well, let me just right. double check like when my schedule is. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, I'm actually speaking or moderating yeah. a lot as yeah. well. I and think I was most like, of your stuff, luckily, is then, on Friday. Then they called and then they were like, um, can you, can you, um, show some houses during <laughs> Liberty Forum in Keene. And I was I like, no, right. no, I cannot. Right, like, I, I'm it just, is. And Keene's I'm, further away than anybody ever remembers. And, and I'm starting to just internalize no. I've got to say no more. This is a lesson everyone can learn back home. You have to actually say no to some things. I hear you. And, um, I, I hear you. We had new movers last night. That was really fun. Yeah. Uh, and had some live music, which oh. is the first time we've done something like that. The guy was really good. We yeah. should like book him what, for what, something. What, what, what kind of live uh, music? Uh, covers, but uh, really like solid. Interesting. And, and then I got home. I'm so embarrassed, but I'm going to tell the story anyway. I was like, oh, why is my shoulder sore? And I was like, my shoulder sore from dancing. Oh no! And well, I was like, "Oh just my god!" It somehow, and then <laughs> well, it. no, I injured it a couple of years yeah. ago diving to uh, separate Obi from a backyard dinosaur. But then, uh, but yeah, it's and then funny. I got, uh, anyway. So I did yoga right before I came, which was why I was late, and now everything. So anyway, anyways. Um, um, we will be back next week. I will be totally a space Flustered. cadet. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, hopefully by next week, I won't have anything left on my plate to do. Um, except well, for that's optimistic. Yeah, um. no, I'm a planner. I'm one of these people. I have to do it. You know, I try to avoid the last minute stuff because it just makes you crazy. And, you know, that's just logistics. That's what, if I could go back and start my life of, you know, my adult career over again, I should have just been... A logistics person. Like, that's what I should have done. Logistics, because I can do, lo that's what I do. I'm an organizer. I'm a, yes. I'm a schedule keeper. I'm a spreadsheet person. That's just what I uh, do. Oh, that is not my skill set. Yeah. You either got, well, that's what I mean. You either I mean, got, I can really do it, right? right? It's kind of like, I mean, you know, I was a lawyer on two yeah. continents. I can do rationality, right. logic, and reason. It's just, uh, uh, after yep. a while, it's boring. Yep. It's like the same thing over and over it's and over again. It's a math thing, too. Like, for and me, it's partially in my math brain. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I just don't. I, like I, I don't like the spreadsheets. <laughs> anyway, it's not for me. Um, enjoy the weather. It's going to be sixty degrees today. Knock on wood. I do think winter's finally over. Yeah, I and, mean it's March, so it kind of is. We'll probably get some snow. I'm sure in between now Will and we May. Though? We haven't even like, had snow. Little, like flurry <laughs> snow, not like snow. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I, we're done. I think, and someone made a comment because we said I said something about geoengineering, and then I was like, oh, am I going to have to drop all the links for you guys? But um, yeah, I think it's the methane yeah. from the Nordstrom mm, leak. And also, because we're just rambling now because we have some time left, Nikki Haley out, out of the race. She's out. So, Shocking. She did win Vermont. Well, I mean, I think Vermont as a they, entire socialist Viet, Viet, what did they, Vermont Kong. That is what PJ O'Rourke used to call Vermont, right? The Vermont Kong. <coughs> 
voted against Trump, right? Like the exactly. entire state has, has Trump derangement yes. syndrome. And for the one person who didn't hear this, Trump also, the Supreme Court unanimously. Yes. So I'm going to tell a joke. Okay. Let me see if we could pull this off. Knock, knock. Who's there? Owen. Owen who? Owen nine. So Owen nine. Yep. Supreme Court yeah. was like, no, actually, we you do can't. still have this much yeah. rule of law and, in America. And, I think and that you know, the dude's got to be on the ballot. I think you're going to see more of that because I do think. I think people are done. Like well, the normal, rational yes. people of the world are yes. starting to go. Can everyone who's a numb nut just stop? Yes. And I do think um, the, the the Supreme Court's going to at some point have to decide whether there was an insurrection or not. And they're, but they're, here's the thing: and I just can't imagine that the Supreme Court's going to say words that that have equated meaning, to an insurrection. or they're supposed to. If you have rule of law, yep. and I've said it before on this show, that is basically when I decided I couldn't be a lawyer anymore. Is when I was like, but. They're literally taking words and saying the opposite yep. of what the definitional it's word is. And so I'm, I'm hopeful that everyone's kind of going, look, yep. it's about time that we got to just get back to some like basics, you know, like words mean things and we're going to apply them and you can't call something an insurrection when it clearly was not. I mean, if someone's going to storm the Capitol. That's one thing. They're going to go with in guns. In America, they're going to go with guns. Yeah, the, like, if there's an insurrection, you're going to know. You're going to know it was an insurrection. So. And I'm, that's not a threatening thing. That's just a reality. That's just common sense. If someone's going to really try to take over, they're not going to send an email. No. <laughs> they're going to show up with weapons. So, and the, yeah, and so don't do that. Don't do course. that. I'm not saying do that. I'm just saying that's what it's going to look like. Come on. The revolution yeah. didn't look like a cocktail party. So, and as a final note, uh, Louie and I went to see June 2 in yeah, we're IMAX going tonight. Yesterday, we're going tonight. Uh, yesterday. It was fantastic. Oh, good, I mean, it's like I was living not a, in it. I'm not a huge. I well, the here. first one is so bad. I rewatched yeah. that. I can't. Too. I, I fall like, asleep oh every God. time we rewatch it. Uh, but. Uh, the the trailer was the Civil War trailer, which made me think of it, hence insurrection, right, full circle. So there's this movie coming out, and it's like Civil War, and it's like uh, California and Texas are like seceding, but I'm yeah. not even sure if they're on the same side, so part of the plot doesn't make sense. But it was kind of disturbing, right, yeah, like to watch. So I don't know who's making these movies. My money's on Russia and China, but as long as they're entertaining, I'll go watch. Okay. That's all we got. They're going to shut us off soon. Um, have a good week and enjoy the weather. Get out there, take a walk, and we'll be back next week to cheer you up some more. <laughs> or yell at you. Bye, Bye. guys.